Well, so today in history, we'll be studying about the market revolution, where it actually consists of two other revolutions, the industrial revolution, which is the one we'll talk about. And we'll also talk about, uh, in the next video, about the transportation and communication revolution. <clears throat> So, all right. So the market revolution is said to be more revolutionary than the American revolution. Well, that's a very common question in the AP US history tests. All right. So we have the industrial revolution, the transportation and communication revolution that is considered the market revolution. And it was marked by inventions, changes in business making and changes in how people brought goods to the market. And so, well, in, in the industrial revolution, uh, the US was, was mainly a farming country, country of farmers. But with that revolution, it became a, a factory, a factory country. And now people were working in factories, making goods. So before they only made food and basic things. Now they could make uh, clothing more. Uh, and they could do that back in the day, but now it was more efficient and more profitable. And so <clears throat> a famous, not so famous, but Samuel later, Samuel, right? Samuel Slater, or Slater the traitor. He was, uh, he was a very good guy because he he did a bad thing, but he was good. What he did is that we had textile mills in the U.S. and was prohibited to was. It was forbid, forbidden for people to copy that or plant uh, textile seeds in other places. And so what he did, he just memorized because he couldn't draw it in a, in a piece of paper. So he memorized that how the machine worked and brought that to Rhode Island where he, where he lived. And he made a textile mill, and people call him Slater the Trader because that was a act of treason, but it helped Rhode Island immensely. Also, Charles Lowell, he made a sewing machine. Actually, not Charles Lowell, it's Francis Cabot Lowell. Am I right? Yeah. There are no surviving portraits of him. In that bed. In his bed. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he. Who is Charles? Low. Low. Yeah, he was a railroad. No, so, yeah, I'm right. And this guy, he made the, he made the sewing machine, and then later Stinger, which is very famous. Stinger, uh, sewing, sewing machine. Oh no! Yeah, but uh, Stinger. Uh, he just made it better. But who made it was Char uh Francis Law, the sewing machine, and now people could make uh clothes faster, and it was cheaper because it didn't need too much uh it wasn't intensive labor intense so there were new kinds of machinery used to make goods and now also women can make respectable wages out of home because if you were, were a woman you're basically you're locked in a home inside the home and you can get money in a respectable way. Now, we do have a 
We do have women head away. And so, yeah. So now they, they are working in the, in the factories. And Eli with me, we could say she was, uh, I don't know if so she or uh, he, let me see. Eli Whitney, I bet it's a woman. No, it's a man. It's an American inventor, why we know for fun. Yeah. He, Eli Whitney, he was good because he did the, he was a good man because he did the cotton gene, but very bad because that meant the, in that time, 17, 18, 1860, uh, 1860, the, the um, slaves were like a dying trend. And when he made the cotton gin, the slavery came back. Yeah. And it was very bad. Why? Because the cotton, uh, cotton, it's, we have like the ball of cotton and its seeds. And it's very labor intensive to take the seeds out of the cotton. But when he made the cotton gin, that meant it was very easy to take the seeds out of the cut. So that meant, uh, and as it's hard, it's it wasn't too profitable. So it, you couldn't have a slave because it's, it, it is very, it wasn't, how can I say? It wasn't profitable, profitable to have a, a slave. So there were less slaves, but with that cotton gin, a guy, a person could process 50 pounds. So we're back. And I mean, 50 pounds, you know, it's a lot of cotton. And so it was profitable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.